on 19 keys and this is high level conversation Oh, no, that's a fact. Tech bias is a huge prevalent issue that's going to continue to be one. And that's why I'm an advocate for the building of technology systems, right, that we own and we get to control. Because otherwise, we're not even playing in the game. This is an arms race at this point, right? This is why the Pope has a say-so in it, right? Because if here's the thing. If, like, you do allow just an uh, uh, AI without any barriers to just go out in the world and find truth if you will right truth is mathematical it's going to have to come down to this logical um pattern that it finds right and it's not going to be based on the bias and if if it wasn't built based on the biases of right its owner and you would ask it questions, then it will give you very calculated answers based on these patterns of logic that it finds, right? So if you then would be like, all right, what did the Anunnaki look like, right? Now, it wouldn't care about whose feelings it hurt and how much information has been presented in the wrong manner. It's going to scrape all of that and say, okay, well, Based on the earliest information was submitted, based on the predictions, the observations, who was there around that time, this is what the evidence we have of what they look like. Now, the danger of that is training on the methods, mm -hmm. right? Because it gets harder and harder to draw out whether it's doing something truthfully based on the methods that it's trained on. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you want it to be non-biased, right? it would have to have access to multiple methods so it can constantly do like these double blind studies to make sure that its own methods are not biased inherently. And that's not something that we given enough thoughtfulness towards because we can recorrect history, right? Yeah. And if we really cared, like we, like, you know, there's the fight of the Florida school and the curriculum and eventually that won't matter, right? It gets to a point where we get to rewrite all of that and rewash history and take the stains that they put off of it. And now you see the true colors. Right. That's something that I'm excited about because we can should go to Egypt and we can show it what it really looked like during that time to where a person that doesn't have to imagine it from the 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 false makings of some paleontologists who decided to say that, oh, they use black skin because or they use the color dye of black because it represented some royalty, but not the actual melanin. And it's like, come on, bro. I don't even, why are we even listening to you in the first place? Like you just, they just made that up, bro. Come on. And they a said, bunch of other people. It was a tan. <laughs> yeah, everybody else was listening to talking about some, yeah, that, that about makes sense. That yeah. about makes sense. <laughs> I think that's part of our task, right? Like our ancestors had to give up physical safety for generational mm -hmm. safety. Like my grandmother was marching, being fire hose so that she could piss in the same bathroom as a white woman. Mm. Right. And so our, our trade off is our cycle our psychological safety for generational safety. Do I want to get on Instagram and do the da 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 and be liked? Or do I want to get on Instagram and be liked with intention and with purpose and through spreading knowledge and through building awareness so that more people can come into shaping these systems and how they're designed? And I feel like that's our task of our generation so that the next generation don't got to trade off. They could just be out here building on top of these tools. So, you know, one thing I'll say is that those types of AIs, we have to build ourselves because they heavily edit these AI systems. So when an AI gets so big, right, they always say it's a black box. It's a black box. They got the tools and they give them away for free. They're just not required to turn them on to understand like what it learns, how it learns and engineer it. They use it when they need to, when there's a bad media, you know, like, oh, something did something it wasn't supposed to. Then they turn those tools on, but, you know, they don't normally turn them on. But like, when your algorithm gets so big, so you're talking about multiple billion parameter language models, and you're about something like Google image search that's been trained for 20 years, and most of those days has got billions of searches, right? There comes a point where to fix it, you'd have to just straight up rebuild it. Mm. When like there's so many of these associations that have been made, you would literally have to just say, scrap this. It doesn't work. We have to start over from scratch. And these companies aren't going to do that. Nah. So what they do is they do is called post-processing fairness or what's called fairness gerrymandering, where instead of actually fixing the problems in the algorithm because it's too big or they're too lazy, what they do is they edit the results that you get to see. So that in ChatGPT, that looks like when you ask it something, it says, sorry, I'm not a doctor. I can't answer that. 
Mm. I'm a language model that's trained. It's not actually trained to say that. They're watching the questions you ask and deciding if it's going to answer it or not. Because it could answer it. It could have, you know, mm-hmm. that data inside of it, but they don't want you to see that. Just like when you saw with Gemini, when it was like, you can I generate a thing of a white family? And it's like, sorry, I can't do that. And then it was making black Nazis like, it was all, <laughs> it was yeah, all messed up. Gemini in was wild. <laughs> right? They can edit the results of what you <sighs> see. So if we want things that are unfiltered for our communities, we have to build them because right. they will edit that out. Yeah. Well, the Anunnaki is a fictional story about this. And some right. people say it's a conspiracy thing, like it's going to generate right. stuff that still perpetuates narratives that are not our own. Right. I think that it, it's funny because interacting with it, you really get to see how much of society is controlled, right? On what's accepted and what's not, right? What's considered to be pseudo and what's considered to be true, right? Evidence and fact-based. Uh, what's considered to be a cult and what's considered to be accepted Abrahamic religion, right? And you see these parameters that set on society in the same way. Right. If you say something that's outside the box of acceptable politics, right, then it cannot be entered. Right. You're blackballed, demonetized, deplatformed. Right. Or you're just not given another opportunity to say that again. So and then if you do, then it is presented in a certain light to make sure that people will be like, wait a minute, that's. That's not something that we actually bless or agree with. Like, that's not something that we accept. It's not rewarded. All right. Society is primed. Right. Through media, through uh, politics, right, through corporatism, all these different ways to put parameters on us to make sure that we view the world in this box, right? You view religion from this box, spirituality, you view earth from this box, you view society, you view spirituality, occultism, all from these parameters that we have set. Anything outside that, we don't agree upon, right? And then this is why there's and aspects of society that is shunned because they're like the people that go on the chat GPTs and asking questions that they're not supposed to be getting answers for, right? There's the people that say, well, well, this is not an accepted, agreed upon established history. So I may tell you the story, but we're going to put this label on it first to make sure you know that this is not real, right? And so this is a control mechanism that the world has been going through based on who gets to control it. And the media has been the most artificial, right, thing that we've had that has narrated reality for the longest, mm. right? And I think that that's what this generation is about. It's this the new way that we're using the technology of our minds is creating chaos again because we don't like the order of things. Mm-hmm. So we say, wait a minute. I don't like this. I don't like the stories you told. Even the fact that the Anunnaki's are even talked about so much during this time when all the historians, the scholars, our teachers, all of them knew about this. They never told us about what was going on in Iran and Iraq back in the days, right? We don't get no stories. We get modern names for things, right? We're not, they're not even trying to connect the dots because it tells a different story if you do. We get the Egyptians. We don't get the Anunnaki, mm-hmm. right? And all of this is done so that it points you towards these paths of what we consider to be acceptable. And why? Because we know how to control you because we have so much data on how to control the people if they are in these boxes. But not if they start operating over here. Now, that's a whole new societal structure that we have to build. Right. And that's where it becomes dangerous. And that's where I exist. You know what I'm talking about? I'm always asking the questions. They say, oh, no, you ain't supposed to get those answers. <laughs> that, well, I'm going to figure out a way to get it. Don't worry about it. You're not going to trick me. Or build your own thing, mm-hmm. right? And that's the beauty of the time that we live in in is that radical imagination, right, gets to actually be executed, right? The, the change in media, as you may think is radical, it's only radical because they've normalized this other thing as to be what is the standard, Right. Otherwise, it's not really radical in the sense that there's something wrong or bad with it. It's just an extreme change from the norm that you've been fed. Right. There was a time a person say veganism and that's radical. Why? Because the meat industry, right, wants in the dairy industry wants you to continue to eat meat. Right now, whether you I'm not a vegan, I'm not sure if you are, but I'm just using that as an example. (laughs) Whatever is the standard is the accepted thing. And that's business as normal. You can't come in disrupting the business. You feel me? Information is everywhere. 
You can log into YouTube right now and type in almost any subject. But I'm going to be honest with you. You won't even know if it's human generated or if it's just based on the algorithm that figured out that you wanted to find this subject. It queried your information, created an automated process so they can get your eyeballs to try to sell you a product or get advertisement dollars. Humans need humans. We don't work and operate that well learning from machines because it's the connection to the information, it's the connection to the process that allows us to grow our neurons. It's that connection that allows us to be able to tap into that tapestry of thought to where we need to learn and be in environments to where we feel aspirational and we are inspired and it's empathetic. So today it's not about just having access to the information. It's not just about being able to have democratized education everywhere. It's about connection. Are you actually connected to it? When you are in a community, it reinforces that environment of connection. And that's why being a part of high level is so important. So you are reinforcing an environment with that human connection. I see you, you see me, you feel felt, you want to learn. Information and data, statistics and numbers and automation is fine, especially if you want to create income and utilize the technology for such. But human connection has always been a real source of learning. Don't just go for the information. Go for the community and go for the connection. Tap in with the guy. 19 keys and this is high level conversation.